So I'm trying to remake Mega Man 1 for the X16. Other than Wily Wars, surprisingly for some reason, I haven't seen this game remade at all, so I decided to take on the challenge. But before I get into the project, let me give a quick background on why I decided to torture myself with this game development project. Alright, so I've been obsessed with the Commander X16 for a few years now. I mean, it's retro but modern, limited yet limitless, easy to begin creating and yet hard to master. Uh, okay, okay, if you don't get what I'm talking about, this is what the Commander X16 is. It's a modern computer, but it's made in the style of retro computers, and not like Pentium old, like Commodore old. It's got a similar architecture to something like a SNES, but a lot more powerful. The reason I'm so obsessed is because it presents an interesting challenge when compared to modern game development. It has limited hardware, so you actually have to think about how you're going to implement things, what feature you have to leave out, what you could barely squeeze in, and I think these restrictions really help to make the game dev process fun. But there is a problem. While there are a few, and I do mean a few, stunning games for the platform, for the most part it's like demos and games which don't really take advantage of the platform's power. So that was my goal, to see how far I could actually push the X16 graphically. I chose to remake Mega Man 1 because it's pretty simple gameplay wise, so it would be easy enough to implement. And the original game is fairly visually simple, so I'd have a lot of space to make meaningful improvements. So, with my project decided, I began to plan it out. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little technical. Okay, a lot technical. I hope you're brushed up on your 6502 assembly and retro game dev knowledge. The first thing I wanted to figure out was what pixel resolution I'd make the game at. The original game has a resolution of 256 by 240 pixels, but the Command X16 on the other hand has a much bigger resolution of 240 by 480 with the unique ability to scale the screen so that you can make pixels bigger and smaller on the screen. So I had three options for the game resolution. One, I could use the original resolution and just scale it up. Two, I could double the vertical resolution of the game while keeping the aspect ratio the same, giving me 512 by 480, but this would give like black bars on the side of the screen. Or three, I could make the horizontal resolution of the game 640, giving me 640 by 480 pixels while changing the aspect ratio. But that would mean I'd have to remake several sections of the game because then you'd have things getting chopped off at the top and, you know, it'd be a whole thing. So in the end, I chose to go with the second option, 512 by 480. I could live with the black bars and if anything, I could just expand the resolution to the full 640 by 480 later and just make minor edits to the levels. The reason I didn't simply use the original resolution of the game which would have made my life a lot easier, was, to be honest, hubris. I wanted the game to look good, as good as possible, and I was like, oh, higher resolution, better looking game. So, with that decision made, I decided to look for the tools I would need to build the actual game itself. I've already made a basic demo for the X16 in the past, so I had a good idea of what I was looking for. I decided I would program the game in a combination of assembly and C, See for more complex logic that required a lot of math like enemy AI and assembly for functionality that I'd have to use over and over again and that would need to be very fast like physics or rendering routines. And to that end I decided to use the CC65 compiler both because it's what I need and more importantly it's the only compiler that has a tutorial for the X16 and I'm not comfortable enough with C to actually make a custom build process. Anyway, with that easy decision out of the way, I came to yet another fork in the road. Tools for exporting graphics and level data that could be read into the actual X16. I usually make pixel art with a sprite, but I need a way to make the data readable to the actual console itself. Okay, before I talk about how I solve this problem, I have to take a little detour to talk about how the X16 actually processes graphics. Like all other computers, the X16 stores graphic data in a binary format. Broadly speaking, modern graphics are stored like this. Each pixel making up the image is represented by 4 bytes, one byte representing the strengths of red, green and blue, and optionally another byte for transparency. Ok, let's say we were using this format to store graphics. Let's say we had an animation of 10 frames that was 32 by 32 pixels in size. Alright, that's 32 by 32 pixels, time to be 4 bytes for each pixel, and 10 frames of animation in total, and you get... Now, that sounds like a little bit. 
it sounds small i mean most games nowadays are several gigabytes in size and their textures are megabytes but the x16 only has 128 kilobytes of vram to actually store the graphics data so even with this one small animation it would take about a third of the vram just to store that and that's not to mention the fact that we also need to store level data and the full tile maps to the game luckily the x16 stores sprites more efficiently instead of this method the x16 has a predefined palette which it actually has defined in vram which stores the colors that will be used for all graphics this palette has 256 colors that can be defined at once so instead of needing four bytes for every pixel you'll only need one byte which is enough to represent all the 256 colors you could have and you could even further reduce this by only using four bytes half in the number of bytes you need per pixel but then that limits you to 16 colors at a time but it halves the amount of storage space needed so it's the method i'll be using Using this reduced graphics format instead, if we look at the example before, we have 32 by 32 pixels um, divided by half because it's only half a byte per pixel. That will give us 5 kilobytes instead of 40, which is an 8 times reduction. That makes it a lot better for storing graphics and that's what we'll be using. But it also means we can't use PNGs or JPEGs. We need a custom format which is actually compatible with the X16. That whole tangent was just to say we can't just load images into the X16. We need to actually convert pixel data to a format that the X16 could read. Fortunately, I had this problem solved already by just loading in the images to a Python script, passing it, and then just exporting it to the X16 format. Unfortunately, this solution has its own drawbacks. I mean, a sprite has its own format for storing images, and then I need to convert that into a PNG and then export that to the X16 format, which isn't very streamlined. So I was looking for a different solution. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Aspart, the program I use to make pixel art, has an API to create custom scripts which can run in the actual application. So I use this functionality to create just a small script that would run in Aspart and could export the files directly to the X16 format. I mean, honestly, I'm explaining this in a few words, but this took a whole week of work. I mean, the first thing, I had to write the script in Lua, which I have barely any experience with. Then I had to learn a sprite's API on top of that, so it was a whole annoying process. But at the end, all I had to do was click the script, click export, and it was done. Okay, so the last thing I needed was something to actually create levels. For this, I just decided to use LDTK, it's a free tile map editor, and then I simply made a Python script which converts the JSON files that the app created into a format for the X16. I'll spare you the details for the tile map format and I'm just gonna skip to the actual art creation process. Okay, so because I wanted the game to look like beautiful, like stunning, like Meta Slug and Marvel vs Capcom had a baby. Yeah, nobody gets that reference. Anyway, I had to make my own art because the original game sprites are kind of conservative due to the NES's limitations. So I loaded up a sprite from my reference and made a little test sprite for Mega Man to see what kind of art style I could come up with. After about a day of work, I came up with this, but then came the hard part. I had to actually animate. So I've only done like a little bit of animation work in the past, so I had to look up a tutorial to make a run animation, but when it was done, you know, it was pretty good. And I'd like to shout out this video about animation in Mega Man. It gave me a lot of insight into what to look out for when animating this run cycle. Anyway, with Mega Man made, I worked on creating new sprites for the four enemy types that show up in Gutsman stage so that I could make a short demo for the remake. That's all the animation work I've done so far, but hopefully the other enemies won't take much longer. So with this animation work done, all I had to do was export this work to the XX scene format so that I could load it into the game. Except of course it wasn't that simple, of course. Let me explain the problem. With the current sprite storage format, this Mega Man run animation, just 15 frames with a resolution of 64 by 64 would take up 30 kilobytes. 
about a fourth of the space available for graphics, which again does not include the tile map or the other sprites. So, to solve this problem, I needed a more efficient way to store sprites. Okay, so before I actually show you how I solve this problem, let me give you a better view of the problem space. If we look at the actual sprite itself, we can see that there's a lot of empty wasted space, right? This of course means more bytes wasted, which is bad. So instead of storing the sprite as a whole, I split the sprite into chunks using an 8x8 grid. Then I could just simply not save the parts of the sprite which were empty, which was fairly efficient, but it wasn't the most efficient use of space either. So for each animation frame, instead of just aligning the 8x8 grid to the first pixel in the image, the program progressively scans down, searching for whichever alignment will give the least wastage. So whichever one has the most empty squares will be the one that the program actually picks to export the image. Okay, so with these sprite optimizations, I was able to bring the actual size of the sprite from 30 kilobytes down to 14, more than 50% of an improvement. But limitations stepped in the way again to ruin my day. This time it was the sprite limitation. Like most other retro consoles, the X16 has a limit to the amount of sprites that could actually be on the screen at once. And like other consoles, it also has a limit to how many sprites could be on the same scan line at once. So if you have more sprites than that on a single scan line, it just won't be drawn. I basically traded a memory limit for a sprite limit. So how did I solve this new problem? So, to solve this new problem I created by solving the old problem, this is what I did. After the sprite was split into smaller sprites and the empty tiles were removed, then I just recombined the sprites into what I call meta sprites. This allows me to get all the memory savings while reducing the amount of sprites being drawn to the screen. This actually also helps with like sprite animation because there's a limited amount of time you have to actually animate all these sprites and move their position on the screen and all that. So, the less sprites you have, the better. The algorithm for actually recombining these sprites is a tiny bit more complicated than what I'm explaining, but to be honest, it's not really worth explaining, so it's time to finally move on to the actual game code. Okay, I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of my code. I respect your time a little bit. So instead, I'll just give you the broad strokes. The entry point of the game is just a C program which calls a few assembly helper functions to initialize the screen. And then it loads the sprite and time map data into VRAM and collision and animation data into RAM. Then it just runs an update function for the player character, runs a function to control screen scrolling, and then just updates the sprite data every frame. The player update function just controls the speed of the player based on the actual joystick input, then it applies the speed to the player's position and does some collision checks. And then the scroll function just makes sure that the level data is actually loaded as the player moves forward or backwards and it actually scrolls the screen and handles the level transitions based on the player position. Overall the code right now is pretty complex looking but what it's actually doing is fairly simple. If you want to check it out, I'll be source code in the description. Anyway, without further ado, let me show off what I have so far. Okay, so it's pretty simplistic for how much work I put in, that's for sure. But it's a fairly solid base to work on in the future. And it does at least look pretty good overall, so I'm happy with the progress so far. With that being said, what do I have planned for this project in the future? Okay, first things first, I have to fix up a few bugs. Okay, a lot of bugs in the project. Right now it's pretty unstable. After I do that, I'll probably implement some enemies, you know, health and items. And then I'll put it all together in a little prototype of the stage itself. Okay, and then last thing I have planned so far is to actually make the Gutsman boss for this level so I have an actual idea of what the full scope of the project will look like. With that done, I'll have to decide what I'll do going forward, but for now, that's all the progress I have and this is the end of the video. Well, if you somehow made it this far, yeah, all two of you, then clearly either interested in this project or just really like the sound of my voice. Either way, like and subscribe to see more. Have a codeful day and I think I'm going to go touch some grass. Peace.